Uh, inclusions this week, Daniel Kerr, is he? Um, yeah, obviously our main training session is tonight. So uh, we want to see how Daniel's feeling. Um, but he, he was pretty good yesterday. But this will be a step up again. And if he's, hopefully he's available for selection. The, the short week uh, back with any of the guys um, that are in India as such? Mm, uh, maybe Butler. But um, he's about the only one, I think. Pretty much everyone's we expect to be right. You know, um, we expect Curry will get through tonight. We expect uh, Embley's right to go. He's already done enough, so yeah, it's good. Does Embley come straight back into this team now with his experience and how many years he's played, etc.? Um, it dep he could come straight back in this week. I think he's fit enough to come in, and um, but we've got the uh, the opportunity to not bring him straight back in. The guys are performing pretty well, so. Um, it may mean that he needs a bit like uh, what Rosa needed, uh, one or two or three hitouts in the WFL to be absolutely up and going. So we've got to weigh all that up. But his experience counts for a lot. John, you're pretty happy with the availability you've got. Just looking at the injury list yesterday compared to what it was at the beginning of the year, it's really looking good now. Yeah, we've been lucky, touch wood, that we, um, other than um, yeah, Newman and McGovern's injury, that, that put them out for a few weeks. Uh, we haven't um, picked up too many long-term injuries. So, um, you know, just the fact that uh, even Mark Nikoski's likely to be playing this week, Jamie Bunnell, um, it's great to see those guys have put in a lot of hard work to get back and, and be available to play. So, um, yeah, everyone's starting to get into pretty good condition. Down glass to 250th. Um, I know you usually say that you don't need any more motivation for a game, yeah. but what do you say to the players about Darren? Are you going to perform the game or how do you approach it? Oh, no, we'll have uh, a highlights tape showing um, Glassy uh, a snapshot of his career from when he started all the way through. And um, all that will do is uh, just highlight what the players know he brings to the team uh, on the field. Um, players are well and truly aware you know, how much they respect him as a leader off the field. Um, so we don't. We don't harp too much on about it other than acknowledge that it's he, he's reached the milestone and um, and we just take a deep breath and, you know, probably um, reflect on how much he has added to the, t the club. Do you feel that he has, since becoming captain, I mean, has coach seen him growing the role or feel more comfortable as time goes? I, I think, changed? yeah, but I always see that as a natural progression. Darren Glass as an 18-year-old has learned a lot. To, to where he is now um, and so you learn as a young player as you develop and then in a leadership role you learn about what being the main leader is all about and you, you would expect that you would improve over time and keep getting better but he uh, to be selected as captain was about what we knew he was already showing what he had in him and, and he's certainly lived up to that Would you, I mean, given the form he's shown he's, everyone seems to be thinking this is his last year no, I disagree. I don't think anyone's thinking this is his last year. You should have said last year, last year that maybe one more. I mean, bottom line is he's playing such good football. Is it more likely you think he, he will go on? Well, right at the moment, you would say he's, uh, yeah, he would definitely be playing top line football again next year. But that doesn't mean he has to play. He's got to make that call on where he, where his life's at and what he wants to do. But um, yeah, I think Darren has basically said that. Uh, it's hard to predict two years in advance when you get to his age, and he's happy to take it a year at a time. So I think when he said that this year may be his last, I think all he has said is, I'm not going to make a call beyond this year. And he'll be saying that about next year, if you know what I mean. He'll, um, but if you asked him right now, uh, there would be no reason why he wouldn't be thinking about playing on. A couple of your former teammates have ranked him really highly as a player in the club's history. Where would you put Darren Glass? Oh, in the, in the top. Well, I don't know how many, but he's up there with the, any of the best players that have played at this club now. Is he as good as or better than, say, McIntosh? Oh, that's, Ashley McIntosh was an absolute champion as well, you know, with what he achieved here at the footy club. And uh, um, Glassy's right up there with them all. Uh, I'm not going to say which one of them rates above the other because I think I'm happy for everyone to 
make the rolling call on that. Everyone sees different things, but uh, Glass, his record as a player stacks up with um, with all our best guys. A lot of talk about Majak Dora over the last couple of days. What mm. have you made of his, I suppose, his performance on the weekend and how yeah, much exciting. time does go into someone like him? Uh, just normal normal preparation in terms of um, you know, Drew Petrie, Mad Jack Door up there, the rest, you go through their whole list. We, we weigh up matchups and what each player brings. Um, so the uh, the excitement about Mad Jack at the moment is wonderful for the game, but he's just another one of the 22 that will run out for the Kangaroos against us. John, what have you made of North this year in comparison to last year? Do you think they've changed much up in the way they're playing or? There's some subtle changes around the way they're going about it. Um, the key thing that I see with North is that their players are starting to hit that good mature age where they're starting to really impact games. Um, some of the players that have carried injuries um, are, are getting fit and getting games under their belt. Zeewell and Cunnington and Bassanak are all going to be good players for a long time and um, they're starting to hit that good mature age. Do you look back at that final last year at all to see what you did well there or...? Uh, yeah, we played them in Tassie last year. We learn as much out of that game as we do out of the final. So um, we look at it probably two or three games about what teams have been doing, what, what we've tried, what they've tried, what's worked for us, what hasn't worked. So we look at all those things. How did you assess last week's performance? Our performance? Um, yeah, not, not at our best, not at our slickest, but uh, strong enough to, to win by 26 points. Are there any things that you're tracking through the weeks? Matt Pritis said on Monday he feels like the side's getting closer and closer to their best. Do you feel yeah. like that progression is there? Um, the progression's there. Things are coming together. Basically, we've added Wellingham in, Rosa in, Nat Nui in the last few weeks, but then we haven't had Waters and we haven't had Kerr and we had Marston out. So um, what we really want to do is get what we think is our best team out there and, and keep it out there for as long as possible. And that, that's when we're going to get a better feel for how well we can perform. Kicking in front of goals improved dramatically the last two weeks, but I think overall you're 14 for 15th in disposal efficiency across yep. the ground. Is that an issue for you? Um, we've had a couple of wet games, which um, that does impact, but overall we still want to be better at that, absolutely. Just back on the clubs as well, obviously it's been a long journey. For him, you just take us through what he's been doing and how he's handled it. Yeah, well, he's he obviously had an extremely serious injury that needed full on um, surgery to reattach his hamstring, uh, and then he's had some uh, some setbacks along the way. Which, uh, with that serious type of surgery, um, it's probably rare not to have some setbacks. His have been a bit more long lasting, but he's never once um, stopped doing the professional work that he's had to do to give himself a chance to come back. And that, that means that doesn't mean it's been smooth sailing for him, that he's been um, excited about it the whole time. It's been pretty tough for him, but but he never once took his focus off what he's about, which is he wants to be playing good enough footy to be considered for selection in the senior team. And uh, he's getting his first step is to get back playing footy. So he's back to that, but it, that's not where it ends for him. Now he wants to play enough footy and good enough footy to be um, playing um, well enough in the waffle to say I'm available to play for him. What's his program for this weekend in terms of minutes, things like that, and then the next year? Uh, I, I think this week's about 60 or 70 minutes, yeah. um, and that will slowly go up depending on how he pulls up. So, you know, it might be 80 or 90 the week after, um, providing that he's pulled up well. And it's been such a long time since he's played. Is it likely that he'll need a good six-week block? Um, yeah, you can't predict that. Yeah, you really can't predict it. He's, uh, he's done a wonderful program. He's in great physical shape now. He just needs to play. Now, his touch may be back within two or three weeks. Um, so we don't have a date set on that. We'll just assess him on how he looks. So it seemed to be a smart... Uh, was it a month ago or a bit over a month ago where he sort of put it on hold a little bit, his training? Is that right? Um, yeah, that, that's happened a couple of times over the last three or four months where uh, if he's felt soreness, we back him off and we assess why that soreness is happening. But, yeah, I'm not sure specifically in the last month. Uh, we played reserves, Subi? I would expect so. That's that's really Subi's call, depending on how long he's actually available for. If, if they thought they could... If they wanted to play him for 70 minutes in the seniors, 
um, they could go for it. But uh, we would expect at this stage, um, for how long he's been out, reserves will be his go. Dean Cox is okay. Yeah, uh, well, he um, didn't do a lot yesterday, but no one's indicated that he's in any doubt. I think he pulled up pretty well. There's another milestone, not as significant as glasses, but Scott Selwood's playing his 100th. Can you give us a word on his performances? Over yeah. Yeah, Scotty's just um, professional. Um, very quickly uh, brought himself up to the elite level as a midfielder in the competition. And uh, he's, he's still a young player. He's got a lot, long, bright future ahead. But um, yeah, he's been in our leadership group for a couple of years and uh, sets a real good example for us there. Do you see him as a future captain? Um, he's certainly got the capabilities and the, the characteristics to say he could lead a team, for sure. John, just on the best 22 you mentioned earlier, you wouldn't see them out there. Is it possible this weekend we might see the closest to what we've had all year? Um, well, yeah, absolutely it's possible because um, you know, I think the only two or possibly three unavailable will be McGovern, Newman and... Uh, and maybe Butler, but you know, is Nikoski in our best 22? That's that's a good debate to have, and he's not going to be really available for senior selection for a few weeks. Um, so anyway, we're, we're getting a lot closer. Yeah. Marston, he was just crook. Yeah, he was just crook. Right yep. Yep. Fully recovered.